Let's now shift our focus to the United States where the election rhetoric has reached a whole new phase. Race has become a big theme this poll season. In fact, on Wednesday, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump challenged his Democrat rival Kamala Harris's racial identity. I'm quoting, is she Indian or black? Quote unquote. That is what Trump questioned during a convention for black journalists. And he doubled down on his claim that Kamala Harris has only recently become a black person for political convenience. Listen to this for yourself. So, uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage. And she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. And now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically black one. college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way. And then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just be and that was Donald Trump proving what many in America feared, that running against a black woman in elections would prompt the former president to bring the race card in the polls. And naturally Democrats expressed outrage and Republicans expressed discomfort. Race, as you know, remains an ugly underbelly of American politics. And how did Kamala Harris respond to Trump's claim? Listen to this now. This, this afternoon, afternoon. Donald, Donald Trump, Trump spoke, spoke at the annual, annual meeting of the National, National Association, Association of Black, Black Journalists. Journalists. And it was the same old show. The, the divisiveness and the disrespect. And, and let, let me just, just say, the American people deserve better. Same old show. That's what Harris said about Trump. Remember, the American vice president has always called herself biracial. She has long embraced her black and South Asian identity. Harris, the daughter of a Jamaican father and an Indian mother, was raised in a predominantly black neighborhood in Berkeley, California. Her mother believed that her daughters would eventually be recognized as black women and therefore wanted them to be surrounded by strong role models. In her youth, Harris attended Howard University, a historically black institution in Washington, D.C. In 2019, she famously said, I was born black, I will die black, and I'm not going to make excuses for anybody because they don't understand, quote unquote. So why is her racial identity being questioned now or spoken of in such a way? What does her race have to do with her ability as job? As her, uh, to, with her ability to do her job as a potential president. And why has Trump decided to attack her racial identity? Could it be because he's rattled by Harris's campaign? Just look at what's happened. In one swoop, Trump was able to hijack the new cycle with his rather problematic claim. Sure, it has become a nightmare for Republicans as they are already reeling from the tightening race between Trump and Harris. But Trump does not worry much about that, it seems. During the convention where he made the attack on Harris, Trump concluded his statement by fanning the flames of conspiracy theories. He asked, I think somebody should look into that. Quote unquote, meaning somebody should look into whether Harris's racial identity is what she says it is. And with that one comment, he was able to add fuel to the fire with far right voters. And since she stepped forward as the Democrat presidential candidate, a potential one after Biden, the far right have been questioning Kamala Harris's racial identity. It perfectly fits Trump's politics. Remember, his political rise began with a crusade to de-legitimize America's first black president, Barack Obama. Not much changed since then. Winning over black voters is important for both the candidates, of course. In 2016, Trump partly won his race against Hillary Clinton, partly because fewer black and Latino voters turned out to vote. The Democratic Party has traditionally received more than 80% of black votes. 
In 2020, 92% of black voters chose Joe Biden, while only 8% voted for Donald Trump. Black voters currently make up at least 10% of the population in several key states, including Michigan and Florida, states that will play a big role in this year's election in states like Georgia. Black Americans account for a third of eligible voters. It means small changes in the vote could sway the election. The whole row is a reminder of uh, any. This is the first woman of color running for president of the United States of America, that too on a major party ticket in a country which has never had a woman president and only person of color serving as the president. The bottom line, Trump's questioning of his rival's identity has just made it a big part of his campaign and by extension, the entire 2024 poll rhetoric. Just how low it stoops is yet to be seen. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.